I love playing pirates. There are so many different ways to play pirates that it's very difficult to decide which one is the best. Now we have discard pirates, we have scenario pirates, we have golden necker pirates, and then we just have, I don't know, whatever's left from that. So I put together a deck that I think is really good that doesn't lean on the crutches that come with discard pirates or the tempo dumping of golden necker pirates. It still has tempo, has tons of control, has a lot of flexibility, and I used a couple cards that I haven't used before in a pirate's deck, so it feels new to me. Now, I know you're probably thinking, oh Q, you're at rank seven, going on six, whatever the case, like I get it, but I did take a little bit of a break from the game, so I have to work my way back to pro ranks. So as I progress through the ranks, the deck guides are going to get better and I'm going to be a bit sharper, right? I'm just getting my flow back and stuff like that. So, you know, bear with me here. I think the deck is still great. I was brewing this one for a while and played a couple games, did well, made some adjustments. I'm really happy with this version here and I went on a tear with it. So let's have a look at it. We got Muzzle Clash. I didn't know what else to call it, but it's kind of what we're doing in this deck. So essentially it all revolves around this Onslaught Leader ability. We have Order, Damage an Enemy Unit by 3 with 2 charges whenever an enemy unit becomes damaged. Give all allied pirates and ships in your hand one armor. Now I wanted to lean into ships as much as I could and have pirates that sort of play into that a little bit. So the ones that I threw in that I wasn't really playing in the past for pirates would be the diamond pirate at nine power for five provision. It seems really good. It can also act as a like a consistency card in the event that I don't get the draws that I need. We have to be careful about it though, because it will move the top card from our deck to the graveyard. But most times I'm actually turning that off by having a ship on the board because you know, we could chuck away some gold cards that are actually really important, but nine for five is really good. And what actually almost outshines this nine for five is this 10 for five. So we have the diamond smuggler coming on here, and I'm surprised that it took me so long to realize how good this card can be. Deploy, if played next to a ship, spawn a base copy of self on the row. Zeal order damage unit by one. So the damage unit by one can actually give us a leader passive tick so we're going to be getting an armor on stuff in hand which is great it can also chip things down so that we can make sure we're completing kills with other leader abilities or you know crack whatever the case we have a lot of ping things on the board so this felt really good but it just felt like we're getting points on the board we're getting get a little bit of damage and you know life is good that way so these are two cards that i really like to have in the deck to Round it out with some ships to make it worth it. We have the on crate long ships, probably one of my favorite engines in the game. It is very simple, but it's very annoying if left unchecked. Melee, whenever your opponent plays a unit on their side of the battlefield, damage it by one. So if they play a deck that just plays a lot of units, create and place, you're gonna get a lot of value from this card here. And what's better than one? We have two, okay? So those are going to be working and whenever we're ticking and giving things damage i have the diamond light long ships that are going to be getting a ton of armor in the hand now i actually like to use these ships the long ships in round one to win it and then i like to go into a long round three believe it or not with the diamond light long ships because these let's say it has 10 armor on it you know you're getting 10 plus 5. 15 value for four provisions is just absurd there are very few things in the game that can top what this does at 4p if we could set it up which is not hard with this deck so i have those boats there funeral boats not as good as it used to be on launch but it's still a very good card to have and uh, i did put in one in the deck here so whenever a card enters either graveyard during your turn damage a random enemy unit by one so ways that we're going to be able to get cards in our graveyard would be when we play supremacy when we play royal decree into something when we have um let's say come on now we've got abradage for his blessing but most importantly the seagulls so damage three units it could be ours if we really want it to but usually it's going to be an enemy unit then spawn a seagull in your graveyard for each target that is damaged or destroyed when an enemy unit is destroyed, summon self from your graveyard to the range row and then gain doomed. So if I have two seagull in hand and we hit three targets, we're going to be putting three gulls in the grave and we're going to be getting three damage from the light longship. If I can complete kills with pings from other stuff, you could see how that's going to escalate really quickly. So 
that could actually win around by itself but i don't want to commit too much to it in fact two seagull can be sketchy in some cases but i think it was worth it if you're finding that you know two seagull is a little bit too much for you go ahead and put a gutting slash in but i feel like Really good card to play on a pass round. We just put one on the board. At least that's one point carryover into round three. We could play one from hand in round one. So we get four points of carryover total off the two seagulls. It's not bad. I think that two is just fine the way that it is. And uh, that's why I kept it that way. One of the big mechanics that we're going to be focusing on with this deck here is Clash. So Kyre Troll is sort of a staple. So Resilience... Deploy, create and play a bronze on crate unit. Now, keep in mind that on crate units do include the boats. And pretty much all these choices are good here. I think most often you're going to be looking for either a long ship, a raider, or a great sword. All of these are really good. You could have a situation where the armor smith is playing for a lot of points. It's not what usually comes to my mind. I like to play this sort of early, get an engine out, and then when they play something that needs to be answered, I can go ahead and take the clash from the order. So on the order, we're giving an allied unit six armor, then it clashes with an enemy unit. We get to choose which one, of course. So we use that to our advantage and we disrupt their strategy from even beginning. I have other sort of clash stuff in the deck. Yes, Yana on crate. Only 10 provisions has veterans, so in round three, it plays for eight points. Damage self by own base power, then split as much damage randomly between enemy units. So if I use leader charges or whatever else I have, like a Kyre Trolled, and then we just put this, we're looking at wiping the board from like 20 points down to nothing in a matter of one turn. So it makes it very difficult for the opponent to set up. And because I have this much flexibility with... The Kyre Troll, the Yastiana, the Crack on Crate, when we play beside it, we can actually clash and, and do that as well and engine that out. I have so much other clashing stuff that I felt like it wasn't as necessary to put in the deranged Corsair. I didn't really want to play into the Cataclysm too much in this one here because, again, I felt like we're going to be killing so much stuff. Now, uh, what else do we got here? So... Just in order to get our Bloodthirst, I got Naval Supremacy. Really cool card to be able to play a bronze ship. I like how Supremacy sort of falls in to support the pirate and the smuggler. It's like a just-in-case thing. And of course, we get that Bloodthirst. So every time that they play a unit, they're going to be taking that damage at face value of one power. And then when we play a unit, we're going to be just taking it off the armor. So it works out really well for me in this case. And... Uh, it helps us establish a bit of a better board state for Bloodthirst 2 condition of something like Aberdage, so it's not an awkward card to play for a thin. Believe it or not, with all the pings that I have, I did find it difficult running two Aberdage in the deck because sometimes I'd go into round three and I would have exhausted leader or I didn't really have the cards in hand to help set up the Bloodthirst 2. So then it got really awkward and it was playing for two points. So you got to be careful about that. So one seems to be the sweet spot. When we're looking at consistency, I have the one here. We have optional two and three. Depending on the situation, we could use it for the discard. I have Raiding Fleet, which is also going to help. I have Knickers, which is going to help. And I have Royal Decree. You don't need more consistency than that. You just have to draw better and do better, I guess. I don't know. You know what I mean? I think it's good. Now, Crystal Skull seems to be the best pick because we could put it on Crack on Crate or we could put it on one of the long ships and we just get a tremendous amount of value. If you don't believe in boosting it up and you just want to go for the pure greedy consistency, whatever the case, go for Mask of Ouroboros. I don't mind that so much. I have uh, Freya's Blessing because I feel like bringing back a Diamond or bringing back a Smuggler or bringing back one of the long ships would just be a really good play. They're sort of min-max bronze cards, so I want to be able to play at least one of them again. And then I have Fakusha to bring back either one of the bronzes and get a bunch of rain from the passive here, the second effect, right? But if we don't need to do that, we can just do it for a less polarized option like Crack on Crate. Normally you wouldn't do Yestiana, you could do Holger, right? So you have a couple options there. Now, you're probably looking at why is Muzzle in here it doesn't really make sense to me. I'll tell you why. Because we have so much removal that I didn't think it was necessary to go in with a heat wave. Normally, I'd probably put a heat wave in here, but we're deleting so many different things. So I'm not too worried about the artifacts. I'm actually more worried about the engines. And if we're able to take something, all the better. It's a big swing. 
right? They have six points on their side of the board. I take those six points, put them on my side of the board. Huge, huge momentum, especially in uh, mid to short round. So that's definitely an option here. Surprisingly, we have a decent amount of tempo. If you're not a fan of muzzle and you feel like you get more value out of Arendite, I'm all for it. But I just think that this is really cool. I have a Peller in there anyways, because if I want to get around the defender and see something, I can. If I want to see something, then purify it, I can. If I want to purify one of my engines that I think is really important, I can. So there's just a bunch of different options with that there. Have to say, I'm loving the deck. I wouldn't change anything at this point. Again, Pirates decks are probably some of the hardest ones that I would make because there are so many cards where it's like, man, I wish I could put that in, but I can't this time around. You know what I mean? So if I'm typing in Pirate here, you'll see what I mean. Uh, we could go Scenario route. We could go Defender and put a bunch of stuff behind it route. We could go Bjorn. I didn't choose Bjorn here because I'm not going Discards. I feel like that's when he really shines, right? Look at all the Pirates we got. A lot of times too, I put in things with the veteran tag and then I put in King Bran at 11 and I try to get the pay payoff for the veteran. But uh, even this time around, I decided that I'm not gonna be doing that. So let me know what you guys think of this deck. I think it's pretty sweet and uh, it's been holding up. I know the rank's not really much to boast about right now, six going on five, but you know, we're doing pretty well for the season so far after a little break. So, you know. Give it a try yourself. If you're a casual player, you're absolutely going to stomp the ladder with this. And uh, for those who play a bit more competitively, let me know how it's holding up right now in the game. Thanks again for watching, guys. And if you have any recommendations for what to play in the next one or things that you want to see or haven't seen before, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do that. I'm having a lot of fun lately, so I will see you soon. All right, first up here we got Skellige, Rage of the Sea. So for a round one hand, I like to have the point swing if we're going on blue. So it's kind of nice to have here. A little bit of setup, some defense. I need some hard removal. I don't have a lot of ships I want to play early. So I think one of these goes back. Round one, we don't want to hold on to Freya's Peller. I don't think I'm going to be needing in round one either. Supremacy's not bad. It's likely going to be opener with Supremacy, to be honest. Nice. Just in case they have four-point removal, we want to have that strong. And then this way, we're going to get some armor going. So whenever we play something, we're not actually going to net damage. But when they play something, they will. So... I think this card is such a curveball, the Diamond Pirate. I've underestimated this card for far too long. It's obviously a little bit better at 9 power, so I figure we gotta take advantage of this now. So they're playing Beasts. It could be Renfree if they're going with Elder Bear because sometimes you stretch for it. I think I'm gonna go for some carryover into later game and just try to pad these up nicely. Obviously, Terror of the Seas, big win condition here, so we take that. I'm looking at possibly taking the Aberdash here so that we can get a bit of a fin. It's one of my consistency tools. So we can go ahead and take something like that. Then we can go for the carryover play on the Seagull. I want to go into a long round with the long ships. I think they're valuable for that reason. So It's one of those things. Let's see if we can uh, remove this though. If I make it the lowest unit, then it gives me a little bit more reach. Normally, I'm going to say, well, I don't really want to hurt my own cards, but what I'll do is I'll probably, I was going to play one of them without the Aberdash, so I don't waste. Here, let's just do this. I'm down to be hit by one. It's not the end of the world, you know? And then if we have to, we'll, we'll play into it a bit more. 
will get the bloodthirst too whenever they play the unit. I just don't want those to be bonded because if they bond the half roos, they get late game payoff. It gets bad for me. very good for them. Okay. I don't really want to take Seagull play and lose value, so I'm going to take the Smuggler. If played next to a ship, we got to be careful about that. Part of me just wants to get out of the round. I'm not going to use both. I'll just use the one. There we go. I got a really good amount of carry over here, guys. They got some too. Supremacy ticking for six more. It's a very good hand. It's one of those things you want to play down. I need Fakusha and I need Trolled, but most other things we're doing pretty well with here. Kind of down to just keep it. I'm going to see what's going on. I want to play Funeral Boat, and then I want to try to get out Black Hand, and if things are looking pretty good, then I'll probably go fleet and then put these down and try to just pound the round, but we gotta be careful here. The fact that we have the Yes Deanna on crate in hand makes me really want to push so that we get this short round with just a lot of value. And I wish I had Peller. That's a big tempo swing. Jeez, eh? I don't really think I want to spend much more. I could just be a very responsive play into round three. So if I just go in with something like Seagull here, just get the carryover. It's a free play, so it doesn't hurt that much, you know? We get the armor for it, we get the graveyard carryover, so we take those. And we get a thin. The thin makes them want to commit a little bit more. I don't think they're in a position where they really have to, because they have nine cards, but... Okay, they play the half group. So how many unique beasts are they going to have here? Two, three, four, five, six. We have uh, Supremacy at two. They go first. They have a double play turn. I want to make sure uh, we get the most value from that as possible. If they play here down to seven, it's to eliminate value from Supremacy. But I don't know if they're really looking at it that deep. Could also be just to set up the graveyard with more beasts, so... I think if they're going to play here, it's going to be something unique. Yeah, you see? In the end, the sea sure. Muzzle is going to slap. I think what I'm going to do here is get rid of Seagull. It's a little late for that. I need Royal Decree and I need this. It's not impossible. I still have ways to get cards. What's in deck for ships? We got one ship. I could brick that pretty easily if I don't be careful. I think I have to play it safe. That's not bad. So we're going to go in and get one of the boats, and we're, we're missing actually two golds that are fairly important. 
There's not much I can do about it. Do I have a second one? Yeah. So I think I'm going to go for the double boat here. Play Holger first. And then we'll go boat. I'm going to put the Holger here and the other boat on the other side and make it all pretty. Then we're going to put these long ships in the back row. It's going to be sick. It's at 12. Yeah, everything's just doing so well. The thing is, you're playing rain, but I'm not even worried anymore, you know? I've been seeing an increasingly amount of the rain decks, and I think that this is a pretty good counter. I'm still trying to decide if muzzle is the way. Heat wave is also a thing, but I just find that we have so much removal that sometimes heat wave doesn't really play for a lot of value. Whereas muzzles a tempo swing, we have the power anyways for the boats, you know? Like, uh, I'll give you an example here. If I muzzle this, that's a really good muzzle. I don't think we're gonna need to. You know? This place for three, so. Here, just, that's one of the best leader charges you're gonna get in the game. I forgot about those, but we'll put a boat here and we'll put a boat here so it looks sick. Mm, here we go. Nine points is cool, but I'm thinking about the long round, the big game, you know? If I were that, might be stressing out about now. I gotta get the most value possible out of these. It'd be a shame to not even use half the 12. Oh boy, here we go. I think Kelpie's worth a leader charge here. Just in case they have some sort of boost all type of payoff thing going on. I think I'm going to put the two boats in the middle. Boats in the middle, birds on the side. Oh, that's a brick. Okay, GG's. The plot armor thickens, I'm telling you, man. Ah, they ruined my seagull setup. It's kind of annoying. Um, here. I don't benefit from having more bloodthirst, so let's just kill stuff. They're going to have a really big point swing at some point, so we got to be careful about that one, but... Got a fair amount here. We have last say. We, we kind of just hit it for whatever it needs to be hit for. And the four rain in the back. I think you picked the wrong row, sir. We're not even going to use the armor if we try, so. Guys, yeah, see? I knew there was more to the story. This is disgusting. Yastiana wipes. Should I just do it? No, 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 let's chill, let's chill. We gotta save our, uh... Here, beside a ship? Yeah, let's just do this. Demon! I feel like a bully. They have one swarm payoff, I just don't want a boost all type situation going on, because they're going wide. Now they're going to play something big enough. Look, removal, 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 slam. Now I know you're thinking, well, why don't you play Irish Shade or something of that effect? But to be honest with you, this is not every game that you're going to get this set up. It's just that they have nothing reactive. So we're getting too much value off the ships. Listen, I would take Terror of the Seas on that. But I'm worried about Fakusha, so we're not going to do that, okay? Here. 
Here, let's put this in the middle. Yeah. The deck feels just good as it is. I thought about a gutting slash. I thought about a heat wave. I had a second Aberdash, but I found it was breaking in a short round three. So. There's. You see? Told you Fakusha's coming out. That would have been terrible. Kelpie. Huh. I think what we're supposed to do here is just hit it twice, and then they're going to forfeit when I play this. Oh, I pretty well guarantee you. They could be setting up for just like a big dagger play, because they have a lot of rain. Two games in a row, someone hit that with a Geralt. Surprisingly, I wasn't filming the first game, but it was a win, by the way. Just uh, FYI. Damn, bro. I guess. I want. I kind of want it like a nicer muzzle. Then a three. Is that your Renfrey? Oh boy. Um, zero points, GG. I had to. I gotta show you guys the deck works. It's not a BM. Here we go. Okay, we got MLC Blood Diamond coming up here next. Carapace Monsters. We've got Ogroids, or we have Kelly, or we have just a pile, okay? So, whenever I see stuff like this, get a little worried until they play a couple cards, but we'll see. Alright, I don't think Seagulls are going to be that great if it's Kelly. This is going to be fodder, but we'll see. Hmm. Just because I don't know what we're dealing with, uh, we hold them for the points, maybe? Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll dump one. Okay. Do I boost? Yeah, it's kind of the most impactful thing here we've got, so... It's Kelly. That's a very good open Kelly for you. But then it's going to cost a leader charge, and I don't have reach, so. I suppose Trolled could help. I think we do okay against Ogroids, because we could prevent Might. Yes. <laughs> All the better, too. If it's Fuka, it's probably Renfrey Ogroids. Now, just, we gotta respect the value that this brings. It's no joke. So I actually think it's supposed to be a leader here. Because if they can get two procs on that, it becomes a scary situation. You know what I mean? Um, I think we do it this way. Because then we get tempo and control, and I just need the one ping, and I want to build these up a little bit more, you know? Would have been nice to have Peller in hand, now that we know what they're playing. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. And unless I, uh... I don't know, man. I don't want to give it to them because then they get Osroll, they get the Might, and it's going to be this whole thing. I also don't really want to hit it. Probably will. Probably will. <sighs> I think I'm going to. Yeah. How do I want to do this, though? Waste one of these? Maybe. Yeah. I got the one for later. 
wait for them to play something else, take a seagull there. This is going to go crazy. That's an early ring. Okay, so they want that mine bad. It actually messes up my seagull plan. My game looks frozen. Not on Streamlabs, but on my screen. Okay, there we go. I see what they're doing too. They're just going to go for the resilience play and I have no answer. That could have been a pass, but it's too scary to pass against this type of stuff. Okay, good, good. You know what? I think I have to pass. It's unfortunate, but... Because if they get the carryover... It's in a terrible position. Now they have to do a little bit of work before they can set that up. And then I have an opportunity to get a purify. So. Decent, decent, okay. Uh, you gotta go. It's a little greedy for both. Supremacy could smurf here. I need some of this stuff here. I have one of the boats I want to take back. We've got a little bit more thinning. We're going to get this boat here. Round three is looking sharp if we can get to that point. I just don't know what else we got to do. It might actually just be Freya's goes. There we go. That's a bit better. Freya's could just be a round three thing. You passed on that. Huh. Um, what would you do? Would you go Supremacy? Or would you go Seagull? Let me know in the chat. Either way, I'm doing what I gotta do right now. Uh, let's see. Carry over one point. Carry over... Seagull. This is actually stacked. Look, we got everything except for we got access to that. We need muzzle and we need hooker. So I have a way to get one. I have raiding fleet that's going to thin on a boat. Draw a card. One, two, three. We pulled that for sure. Muzzle could actually slap here. The hand is very good. The only thing I would take, I think I'm going to keep it. Aberdage would have been one of those things where we chuck to try to find one of these, but it just feels like if I go too deep, then I ruin the one ship left, then it doesn't go too well. Here. You gotta go crack first. I'm pretty sure I don't take terror, I take long shit because then I can set up a better terror. Sort of recycling. I want to get the diamond stacked so then if they play something we could just nail it right away. Don't flip. Don't flip. Okay, good. Is there a way to kill it? Uh, yeah. See, this is where that muzzle would have come in handy, right? I would have been able to hit, swerve, and then it would have just went to 10. Three and four. Here, I think it's actually just this. Damage A unit by two. Or by one rather cooldown too. Imagine we just kill it to get it back. Oh, this is actually really, really just good for me. <laughs> you put a leader charge on a necker to get a one point engine. Oh, sad story. Ah, damn. It's pretty nuts. 
Um... I'm pretty cool with... with just, uh... sacrificing the boat. <laughs> I guess I could have kept the one point there from the other boat, but it's clogging up my situation. I don't know. Maybe regrets. Maybe that one point makes me lose. You can blame me for it if it happens. What do you have here? Okay. Why didn't you hit Supremacy? What I gotta do is set up a little bit of a barrier so that I can not hit if I don't want to, you know what I mean? Now we'll get the other boat going. Yeah, I think we lose. Just kidding. <laughs> this one's uh this one's looking pretty good for me. Um let's see here. Yeah, even though we lose the point on that one, it just it makes sense to me to have two going. I should have used that for what it's worth. I can get Holger out if I kill that. I guess what I'm gonna do, uh, hit it with a with a clash, and then we get a couple extra points here. Oh, I messed that up. Listen, I'm playing distracted. I'm gonna basically correct it here. So instead of playing this, I should have looked for the bloodthirst two and played this because now I have a brick in my hand. So you got to be careful about that. I... you get cocky and you get caught. That's about it. So, don't be me. Is there anything else that we can get that makes sense to me? Not really. Here, I'm gonna put, uh... Yeah, I, I feel pretty bad about that play, actually. Just uh, so they can't girdle the back row. Somehow. Mm. We gotta do something with this now. I just want to get rid of any sort of payoff from it. Yeah, I think we lose because we messed up. Oswald's going to play for a lot of points too. guys oh no way <laughs> okay 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 yeah listen you got to be careful with Aberdash that's the lesson of the game and we got double cross nilf guard okay I like red coin that's cool Decent amount of setup. I think I want to go for the carryover play. We don't want to have Freya's in round one. We get a bit of thinning. Thinning. This is good. I have one boat. They likely kill it, but uh, 
We have access to a second, so keeping these is actually not a bad idea. This hand feels like we can go deep. We have a lot of graveyard play, so yeah, I'm good with this, man. It just comes down to first engine I play is not going to stay. And if I insert a needle here, what then? What do they do worse with? They lock a funeral boat, that sucks, but if they lock this, it's not very good either. But they can make a bunch of copies of this, which would be annoying for me. At least that has armor, so it takes a bit of the blow. Ah, let's see. I feel like the start of the show in round one is actually going to be Funeral Boat. Because I have three, six... Oh, jeez. Wasn't expecting that. I guess Hengate could proc assimilate. Trolled... Trolled can remove this if they get one proc on it, and it keeps me sort of contending for the round. I think I gotta bait the lockout, don't I? Women, children, elders, we spare none. Good temple swing, good boy. Okay. Royal decree into uh crack. But the heart not well, we we got to. We got to. We got to cuz if I don't remove this, I lose the round. What a fail. <laughs> Yo, why do I always forget about the passive? <laughs> That's fine. That's more than fine. Whatever. Joke's on me, man. I'm just gonna say, even if the funeral boat stayed... So they have crack and they have the boat that's tied up inside the sword. And my hand is terrible. That doesn't help. If I don't play in a little bit, I'm in trouble. That leader is kind of bad, dude. Let's do, uh, let's do this. We get the second sword out of the way.
chips and then chips. I gotta keep that boat up there, otherwise we don't get to be able to get these out. We need to get these out to get the points back so we can get card back. If I play in deep enough, they can't use leader. Push on! No of course you have a jeez. The Vargas procs the rune mage, that's kind of annoying. Assimilate benefits a lot from this, right? Chance here. That's not bad. Okay, leaders out of the way that helps. We're still card down. She's sitting at three. My duty is to stick my nose where it doesn't belong. That's good. Okay. I have just enough so that uh, I can purify this, get a carryover. Play this and get the damage off of it, and then tie so we win the game. So they take the pass, and then we actually just win. GG's. Alright, Skellige, Blaze of Glory coming up here next. Probably got Warriors, and we'll find out who has the best Skellige deck. The fact that we're on blue coin doesn't help me much, though. We want to be able to go on red with this one here, because they have a terrible round one if that's the case. I don't expect a lock. So terror's good. This plays really good early. We got some quick points that are inexpensive early. I'm pretty content with this. What I'm going to do is put down Funeral Boat and boost it so that they can't take it out with a gutting. And then we're just going to feed off that raiding fleet and so forth. I want to be able to get out of fleet early so that we can get the fins that we need to get the cards that we need late game. Maybe that's a mistake we're making sometimes here. Oh, so I don't walk away from this. Nice. It's like super dead. Now I want Peller back. Usually you don't see this. I always thought she was decent. Seven, eight if you have Harold. Do we take Supremacy? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I got some pirates in my hand. 
Boosting out a unit or range. It actually keeps uh, Buddy in play. Makes it, look at that, four. You're probably wondering, why don't you put that in your deck? Well, it's kind of like very situational, but fun. Played nine for five. Whereas this always plays for ten. And uh, this always plays for nine. How are we doing here? Maybe this, this. Let's try to get a pass here, guys. Damn. That's the problem with this combo is you fire it off, it all looks great, and then they just pass. At least I got some carry over here. It makes this not as scary for me. The hand's looking prime. Let's play crack, bait, and removal, and go from there. And one, two, three. Perfect targets. They actually have an impact when we do it that way, so we're good. Don't love setting up the bloodthirst with supremacy, though, for them. I feel like this boat just stays though. You know, leader of the boat. Modern Freya is patient, but she brooks no insult. We tell not the soil. Big points. We know not the seeds. Just because I think they can kill them if they want. What's he sitting at? Eight. Nice. We'll tend your ankle biters, too. The swings. We tell not the soil, we sow not the seeds. That's pretty. You'll not touch my way, but I'll not let you. Is it too late for Holger? I feel like he should be in the back commanding the whole thing, you know? The problem is they just play iced and they get a lot of points. This feels disposable. I don't want to kill anything necessarily. I don't want to hit this because I'm not going to kill it. They want to put Bjorn back for later.
I'm pretty happy with this. We get the one point off the uh, the long ship here on whatever they play, so a little bit more carryover, but so much control going into round three. And we have Fukusha for defense, I suppose, or whatever we got to do. Bow before modern Freya. Wait, that actually doesn't do it. You're telling me that they have to play in card down or use later. The round three is going to be massive then. Because it's all bronze so far mainly. Mind you, two of the revivals here and then the War of Clans. So if the plan is to play tier, we actually took away from that pretty well. I think it's just something like that. We missed Trolled, can't have everything. We're probably gonna go in for Freya's on a nine. Actually it would be 10 for one of these. If we can get a boat out there, which would probably be this. Just proactive play. I think I'm gonna go Fukusha for crack. then they don't bet if they don't have a that's a huge play I don't want them to leader things it's gonna be tough to get my boat out there unless I use this one It's actually value. <laughs> so we get we get a seagull back when we kill something. In round three, I don't mind using diamond that way. Yeah, surely they have Turk V and we don't have Peller. No one ever plays Turk V but them. I like Turk V, but just wasn't expecting him. We'll just take them back. Take him back, or take take these back. Here, let's just overkill this. Keep the boat there. They're not going to want to touch it, and then we can use this properly. I got 14 points of damage. For them, it hurts more. Wow. Okay. Actually, matter of fact, if I just don't do anything with this.
boost an allied unit by one for each place for six, but we split up the six. We serve her who is virgin, mother, and clone. So see what it is man I could take this off my leader it'll play for five so ten point muzzle this looks like a win to me yeah it's a little late for Harold should have done that first I don't think it would have made a difference look at the amount of points we got here it's pretty crazy uh just so that we're not doing things wrong. Here. It wouldn't have made a difference because we were up by so much. This would have played for an extra four or five points. 